I'm thrilled and excited to welcome legendary doyen of makeup Mary Greenwell to the House of Eldridge today. And Mary is very special to me because when I was a teenager and I was dreaming of being a makeup artist, I used to buy British Vogue every month and pore over the images and obsess over Mary's work. And she used to do all those iconic covers and shoots with Linda Evangelista, Cindy Crawford and all the supermodels. And she became a bit of a hero to me. I really aspired to be like her. And she definitely inspired me to have the kind of career that I have today. Years later, when I had my portfolio together, I went to see her agent and I was lucky enough to start assisting her and doing shows with her, assisting her backstage. And lots of the big top artists working today also worked under Mary. So she's a very respected figure within the industry. Mary's had a long and very successful career. And I think the moment that she really became known outside of the fashion industry was when she started doing the late Princess Diana's makeup. Lots of people had done it before, but when she met Mary, Mary made her up so beautifully and, and, and made her look so modern. She sort of went from an 80s Sloan into this global fashion icon that we all remember today. And Mary worked on all those really important covers and um, iconic images with Patrick de Marchelier that I'm sure lots of you know. Mary is such a phenomenal talent and don't be fooled by the way she applies makeup. Whenever I, I love to watch her, she's such a character. She sort of casually sort of slaps the makeup on and it's all sort of very fast. And if anyone else with less talent was doing it, it would probably look horrendous. But, you know, as usual, every time Mary finishes, you're like, wow, it's, you know, her work is so flawless, which is probably why she's in demand by A-list celebrities worldwide and does so much red carpet. She also has impeccable taste. And this is something that she used to launch a perfume last year. And um, she's about to launch another one, which I've just had a smell of, and it, it's beautiful. She is indeed a woman of many talents and a charming one at that. Now, I've asked Mary if she would do one of the looks that she does on Kate Blanchett today, because I had so many requests from you, from girls who've got very fair skin and very light colouring red hair, blonde hair. And I thought, who better to ask than Mary? So she's going to do one of the looks she does on Kate Blanchett. And we've got the lovely Claudia Devlin, who's modelling today. And I know you're going to love this. I'm so proud to be here. And I'm so proud you've asked me to be here. So thank you a million times. And I only hope that I can inspire you all. And um, Lisa brought me in here to sort of work with redheads to talk to you about redheads, in fact, which is kind of something which I really enjoy doing. I work with Jessica Chastain all the time and Kate Blanchett, who has a little bit of sort of, in her colouring, she has a bit of that kind of redhead feeling, that kind of very pale skin. Um, so it's actually more about, for me, it's not about the colour of the hair, it's about the paleness of the skin and the colour of the eyes. Nothing changes when you're redhead, just have fun and go for it. And I hope I'm gonna help you overcome any fears you might have. Now. I have found that basically nothing changes because you have red hair. In other words, the makeup can be the same colours, the same textures, the same everything. You can create the same looks if you're doing, if you have red hair or if you have blonde hair or dark hair. But the most important thing is the colour of the skin. So if you have pale skin, that is what we're working with. We're working with skin colour and eye colour never hair colour, okay? This is something that I really want to get across to you. It doesn't matter what colour your hair is. Um, it's just simply about working with the look that you want to create. Okay. So on to foundation. Now, years later, I found that the, still the best really fine um, foundation is MAC Face and Body. Um, Claudia has such pale skin that I'm going to mix the palest N1 with the actual white base. So I think the proportion is going to be about 50-50. Okay, so I've mixed 50-50. I want to test it. Where you test foundation is not on your face, but down the side of your neck there. Okay, it is still needs to be a bit paler. Do you see that's not quite pale enough yet? That is where you test foundation. You want the foundation to be continuous, continuing from your neck, and it's a good place to, to make sure it's exactly the same color. Okay, that'll be better. Now I'm just going to go straight to the face. Great, you just stay looking straight ahead, baby. So I have a very, very relaxed attitude about foundation. I kind of just slap it on and hope for the best. And knowing that, of course, by massaging into the face, I'm going to get a beautiful finish. But I'm not really concerned about, first of all, I never use brushes. 
This is just my approach, okay? I have no problem for those that want to use brushes, none. But for me, I find them dirty um, and a waste of product and a waste of time. I also find, find exactly the same with sponges. Um, dirty and a waste of a product and a waste of time. So for me, using my fingers is, is the way to go. So I'm going to cover Claudia's pimples with the University, the wonderful University palette that we all love by Bobbi Brown. Okay, I'm using the palest colour, just with a teeny weeny bit, just each and dab it in with my finger. This is the palest concealer I can find, Dainty Doll Concealer Number One. Okay, this works on. Claudia's amazingly pale skin. So I'm going to dab under the eye with this. Now we finished the base, we finished everything. I'm going to start with a very simple look, sort of a Downton Abbey look, let's say. So I'm going to use, first of all, the Shiseido. Um, it is called a um, Shimmering Cream Eyeshadow, and they're so pretty. Lots of companies make these they, these days, and they're just like add a little bit of texture and color to the eyes. All companies are making them from sort of pinks to dark browns to blacks and they're incredibly easy to use and we'll just sort of pop the eye a little bit. So I'm starting off just with this. I love pinks with redheads, I think they're really, it's really pretty and it'll be a very sort of Victoriana, cute, day wear, easy, youthful, all those words that we love. There we go, that's that done. See how pretty that is? Just that really pretty little pink. So continuing the same look, I'm just gonna make the eye pop just around here. I'm gonna use actually the Giorgio Armani Eyes to Kill. They do a fantastic range of these soft colors. So taking a brush, it's very gold and divine, it's kind of a rusty gold, you see? So I'm just gonna make the eye pop just in the corner here. Again, I'm using creams, I'm using very little, and it's just to help the eye pop. That's all I'm doing. And you just need a very little bit of this product. So I'm taking it actually from the back of my hand. What I'm doing is I'm just making the eye look a little bit bigger, frankly. I'm just sort of getting rid of the blondness of the eye and giving it a bit more shape and definition. That's all I'm doing. You guys must be so good at this because you have Lisa teaching you all the time. It's so easy to do makeup when you have professionals like Lisa teaching you. So I'm just taking this across. So we have a really soft little eye now. I'm going to add a tiny bit of mascara because no matter what, mascara is the biggest tool. So I'm going to use Bourjois Ultra Black Mascara. I have a theory that there's no point wasting time with brown mascara, but that's my theory, okay? I know a lot of makeup artists and a lot of people love using brown mascara, but I genuinely find it a waste of time. Now, listen, guys, I didn't clean the brush well enough. Let me just show you something, everybody. I have too much mascara on the brush. I'm going to have to put the mascara down and I'm going to have to pinch it off. That was completely my laziness. That was my lazy approach. And you know what? Sometimes we make mistakes, even makeup artists, you know, we're not perfect. None of us are perfect. So I'm going to take a Q-tip, the best tool in the industry, and just wipe away my little mistake there. There we go. I'm now going to wipe the mascara brush. I'm going to really, really wipe it because I want so little on her lashes. It was my fault. I should have done that earlier. I'm now going to add a tiny bit on the bottom lashes, just in the center, just to make the eye pop just a fraction. I have not put any more mascara on the brush. I'm simply losing what's left on the brush. Continuing in this theme of this, this very soft makeup, I'm going to use a beautiful pink blush by Givenchy. I love these. I love these. I love the fact there are four colors in one palette and they blend to make create a real softness. I'll show you. So. You know, I always take off the excess of makeup on the back of my hands. It's a great place to do it. Do not go straight from the brush to the face. You will probably make a mistake. And then just gently brush across the cheek. You know, some makeup artists ask a girl to smile. I've never quite got that. I just find it sort of, you know, I want to put the blush where I want to put it, not where the smile is dictating that I put it. And I want to put, in this case, I want to put it quite high up on her cheek just here. And I know I want to put it there. So I want to now bring a softer blush, a less colored blush and a more neutral blush into, into Claudia's forehead. For this, I'm going to use a Chanel. As you can see, it's more gentle and more skin toned colored. So taking the same black brush, I'm just going to dab this on the forehead just to lower her forehead a little bit through here. You know, when the sun hits you in the summer, it hits your forehead here and your cheeks here. So I'm kind of really mimicking the sun by just bringing her forehead, making her forehead blend into the hairline a little bit more with a bit of color. I'm going to use this Giorgio Armani brow pencil. Right, now I want to tell you something. When I was growing up, my mother used to let use a lead pencil through her brows because it was the perfect gray. She had gray hair, she went gray when she was very young. And because of that, the, her brows always looked amazing and totally natural. Never, ever, no matter what your skin tone, use a pencil that has red in it, okay? This is like 
the biggest you can see that that's the easiest way to, to see whether someone's wearing pencil through their brows is if he has red. I think you're probably all learning that I'm quite relaxed about makeup. I'm not very necessarily very precise. I just kind of want things to look very, very real and um, sort of un, almost unperfected. Just really like, you know, yes, it, it's all there and you maybe have done it yourself. This is my little brush from Japan, my little baby toothbrush from Japan, which is by far the best eyebrow brush I have ever had. I'm just going to finish this game. We're actually virtually done. But now, for the first time, for the second time, I'm using a brush, okay? Which is even foreign to me. So I'm just going to put a little bit of powder here. I want to lift this area now. This will just blend the skin blush and the foundation all into one. So there's absolutely no, there's no, there's nothing. It's all blended in so beautifully right now. So this is all kind of like a pure, pure look. But it will, it won't matte but it will, will knock back just that little bit of shine, but also give it a shimmer. Moving on to the lips. Okay, I want her lips to look really, really soft and pretty, so I'm just gonna slightly use a lip liner, but very, this is not really for anything but my own joy and delight, just to help me sort of understand the mouth a bit more. It does give you, you know, the more you work with a feature, the more you understand it. So I'm just kind of getting an understanding of Claudia's mouth when I'm doing this, and then I'm gonna think about what color lip gloss to use just to make our mouth look, keep it as soft and English rose as, as she looks right now. Having outlined the mouth, I'm now going to put gloss, just gloss, this Tom Ford color. Right, pout your lips. Great, perfect, perfect. Now open a bit, open a bit, a bit more. Great. Now rub your lips together. Crazily, mad, up and down, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth like, the, and up and down, big time. There you go. Now doing that, you will expand your lips as much as possible. Um, this is why you see old ladies doing that on the tube and they're so great. They're kind of all going back and forth. I do that now to make my lips, lips look as big as possible. So here we have a really simple look for a red hair. This incredible pale skin. I mean, look at it, but the colors haven't changed. What I've done is I've just brought out the eye very, very fractionally. She actually looks like she has no makeup on, which is a wonderful look for redheads, by the way. This kind of no makeup makeup. I mean, it's so minimal, just with a tiny bit of black mascara to help the eye pop a bit. And as you know, a tiny bit of shadow through here to lift the eye. A pink cheek, very English rose, very Irish pure, very wonderful, all with this redhead look. And then the mouth just popping a little bit more than anything else. It's not like a big, uh, mouth of any particular color it's like the a real color of the skin just popping and enhancing the whole look what do you think um i really like the brows and i like the fact it's natural like the whole the whole thing i think sometimes i put on makeup and it always looks too heavy on me you know or the foundation's too dark but this is really nice and natural it looks like i've got hardly any makeup on which is nice <laughs> good i'm glad you like it